friends welcome to open source cook so in this video we are going to see installation of wordpress so before we proceed let's just see what exactly wordpress is so wordpress is a content management system that is primarily designed to be a blogging tool and uh, it's uh, one of the easiest to install and uh, use things so uh, you can get WordPress from the WordPress website wordpress.org and uh, just go to this website go to get WordPress and here it will take you to the download page here you can see uh, this is the latest one which you can download so either you can download the zip file or you can download the tar.gz and uh, depending upon the OS you are using, you can take any one of it. But it really doesn't matter whether you're using zip or tar. So what uh, are the prerequisites that are there? I'm assuming that you have already uh, installed your web server, PHP modules, PHP, MySQL or MariaDB over there. Here you can see the requirements for the latest version is already provided you can you will need at least php 7.4 you need mysql 5.6 or mariadb 10.1 or greater and you'll obviously you'll need apache running so if you're on windows or some other operating system you might install <coughs> wamp or xamp to get all these things in one go on linux depending upon which distro you are using you can accordingly install the other things the more thing that you might want to install would be php my admin so that it is handy for uh, working with mysql database if you are not comfortable with the command line and all okay so with these things uh, available with you you've downloaded this we can uh, further proceed now keep this handy wherever you have stored it. The next thing before we can proceed is uh, we need to create a database, right? So you can do it as I said, either from the command line or the MySQL command line tool or from phpMyAdmin. So if you have installed phpMyAdmin, uh, then you'll have to log in as root, root as the administrator on your MySQL or MariaDB. So just log in to the root credentials. And <clears throat> from this particular interface, we can create a new database. Or uh, easier way to do it because when you'll be installing WordPress, you'll be using it only for WordPress. So one single database that is there we need for WordPress. So what you could do is you can simply come to user accounts and you just say add a new user and uh, just give it some name let's say my wp user host will let it to be localhost okay okay it says this account already exists so my i'll call it wordpress user and host will say to localhost this is usually suitable and you can uh, use a password so it's generally a good idea to use a nice generated password anything that is there okay so let's keep this information copy pasted somewhere we'll be requiring this this is the password and uh, the host is localhost we'll keep that and my username is going to be this so this i have kept it temporarily and the, before you go ahead just say key create a database with the same name and grant all privileges so what's going to do is it's going to create a database with the same name and grant the privileges so let's just say go over here and this is created this is the query and other things okay so now i'll also demonstrate it to you from uh, the command line so 
depending upon what you are using open a terminal over here and first of all we'll need to connect to mysql with as user root host is not to be actually required but let's say let see localhost and minus p will ask you for the root password give the root password and you're locked in so now the next thing that uh, you need to do is create a database so this is just for demo we'll use the previous one which we have done so just run a query create database database let's say my foo okay and then you say create user my foo user uh, this you have to keep in quotes and we'll restrict this user to localhost and uh, id and tpi identified by give some password for this user so let's say always use good passwords fine so this user got created and now we're going to uh, assign the database which was created to this user okay so we say grant all on what was the database name my foo uh, dot star to this user which we created so that is my foo user at localhost okay okay so let's see this is done so i'll just open another terminal say file another terminal and what we are going to do is we are going to test this user we'll say my sql minus u my foo user and minus p password host it will automatically automatically take as this thing and now this is the password which we will have to enter So we are connected as you can see and you can check by saying show databases. So here uh, this is the user with the one database. So you should be doing this. This makes the system secure. Basically uh, your user is restricted only to one database. So this is via the command line and uh, we should also actually test this one. So let's just log out of here and <clears throat> let's have a look at our credentials so we'll take this over here the username and we'll check it with this password and you can see that we are logged in and this database is created so our first uh, basic step is done the database is ready now uh, next thing that we need to do is start with uh, our wordpress right so <clears throat> okay so i've already downloaded wordpress and uh, i've kept it in my document root. so document root is basically from where your web server is going to actually serve your website so in case of uh, in my case right now my document root is uh, uh just a second i'll show you this is my document root that is where www.html and my wordpress is downloaded into this directory fine uh, this is a root window so like either you can uh, do it from the command line or you can do it whatever way you like so <clears throat> I just uncompress it right. so here uh, as you can see the WordPress is uncompressed and it has been extracted into a directory 
happens in real life actually what's going to happen is uh, you are going to use this uh, wordpress as your main website fine until unless you have any reasons to be keeping uh, wordpress here outside in some other directory or in some sub directory there's no point doing this so it's preferable that you move everything from here fine and uh, just paste it outside okay fine uh, okay so here we have uh, wordpress over here in our machines in the document root so now if you want to access your local machine what you'll be doing is you'll be like going to uh, http colon slash slash localhost and your installation will get started so as you can see the installation has started during the installation it will ask you for this information which we have already gathered and uh, it will also create a file called as wp-config.php which uh, you can see there is a config sample.php so it will copy it and uh, store information so if you come across any issues like write uh, write issues or all um, we'll just create the file so let's see what happens so here it is asking me for the credentials the one which we created so let's this is the username so uh, the username then the password the password okay what was the database name database name is also same because we created with that option of uh, create the database same as the username well, it's not considered a good idea fine but uh, it's and this is a table prefix which it will use uh, for every table in the database that is created so you can set it to whatever you like i'll set it to say open source cook and uh, <coughs> let's continue okay okay so here it says now you can uh, continue run the installation okay so that was done first so site title let's say open source cook username osc user and uh, this is a password which it will uh, use for your login so this is i'll just copy this password temporarily for this purpose you can change it later on according to your requirement so keep this thing in handy this this user which is getting created is basically going to be your administrator for the wordpress site fine later on you can add more users and other things which we'll further discuss and here uh, give a email id in real life what's going to happen is when you run it on a actual web server it will if you forget your password or any updates and other kind of information that has to be passed it comes to this particular email id so make sure what you're giving over here is a proper working email id and let's just go ahead and install wordpress okay so it says success username osc user password whatever you have chosen and let's go to login so osc user password that was a weird password let's say login well that's it you're logged in into the dashboard administrative section from here you can start working by creating your new posts and other things and if you want to see how your website looks right now just go to visit site and this is whatever the default theme is set to and your wordpress site is now installed so I hope you like this video. Do subscribe to my channel for further updates. Thanks for watching.